So let's get started. Um, if you take a typical handset nowadays connected to 5G standalone, you're going to see, depending on geolocation and depending on the user behavior, majority of traffic being video-based and audio-based um, applications. So why does it matter? If we break it down using DPI into layer 7 protocols, we actually see over the years um, the growth of the quick protocol, which is UDP-based over TLS, smaller chunks of HTTP and smaller like control flows. So why does it matter? Well, quick is based on UDP um, compared to TLS and um, TCP, and that matters for uh, the radio congestion control. So if we start um, looking deeper into the quick protocol, which makes up the majority of traffic um, in most 5G packet cores, we see that quick uses um, the functionality of multiplexing over the same 5 topic connection, over the same DP flow. There's this interesting study here in the Journal of Communications um, I'm referencing, where you see that with higher usage of that module or channeling, you're going to get a more unfair uh, congestion control compared to TCP based protocols. And that has definitely impacted historic radio access networks. So, this is the first reason why having some application awareness within your 5G packet core is of advantage to load balance the, the radio side. So if we draw this now up, um, the same use case, uh, historically there is a fair share of user equipment um, attached to a certain cell, so we call it GNOB in, in 5G, and those genome Bs historically have a simple scheduler, so it's either long robin or first in, first out. So if everything is fine and all the applications behave fairly, you're going to have a fair spectrum, share of spectrum defined by the time interval of like one millisecond. And if we take a downlink packet from the most left to the most right, you're going to get like a Facebook message in that goes through the UPF goes into the scheduler, into the transmit buffer, and goes out, out on the radio. So let's do a congestion scenario, something which is overloaded, like in a stadium. Well, once you have this higher impact of quick, uh, with more unfair congestion control, you're going to see at some point an overload on the cell. You're going to drop PDUs, and because of the congestion behavior of quick, you might get impaired. So we can we use the um, equipment on all the units? Um, no, that's so this is the first reason why on the downlink, um, some UPF inspection to understand what is YouTube, what is yeah. a BPF tunnel, what is a simple DNS protocol, will help to load balance the radio state. Um, more importantly, also with regards to DVDK or UPFs, which are the user plane functions, they simply connect on the left side, you see the, the radio side with the data network through the N3 and N6 interface. Well, why does it matter to um, get TVDK based UPFs out there? Well, you have a lot of uh, smart NICs and existing pipelines in place, which make it easy to implement UPFs on TVDK. If you now add DPI to that context, so application awareness, you are able to better load balance within this TLS and quick chunk, um, chunk of traffic, these applications. Um, furthermore, another big reason for all the smart big vendors out here is um, flow detection of elephant flows. So we understand extremely lengthy flows, which have a lot of byte volume as elephant flows, and you want to be able to classify them and chunk them away on the, uh, on the smart link. If you apply machine learning or some sort of deep, learn deep learning on the timing behavior of packets, you're also able to understand if a video flow is actually live streaming versus a download. On like Netflix, you have a button to go on an airplane, you want to download um, your favorite show. Well, it matters because the operator, the 5G operator, wants to be able to maybe deprioritize the download over the live context. And that brings me to the bigger topic here, which is the quality of service framework within DBDK, which makes it really easy to implement those use cases. 
So on the, on the bottom here, you just see uh, this QRS framework as documented in DBDK. It makes it really uh, easy to uh, enforce certain rules on flows and later on with the uh, dropper element or the scheduler to schedule those uh, packets it's on the, the radio side. Part. So let's bring these three puzzle pieces together. Uh, so they call it network slicing in 5G. Yeah, we're completely... Um, this is the concept of network slicing was introduced in order to ensure a certain set of yeah. performance parameters yeah. within 5G. Um, and additionally, it also enables this physical set of hardware to be sliced um, into logical network slices. Um, we will now discuss the 5QI, which is the QoS indicator for 5G, uh, which pretty much is a, is a set of packet delays, throughput, good put, packet error rates, and so on, which help you to uh, pretty much bundle together a certain set of, of quality for the user experience. So the idea here is that adding deep packet inspection, so application awareness, in the context of 5QI enables a dynamic slice selection. So if I take a 5G phone, depending on the user behavior, it gets attached to the slice at runtime. On the other side, if I have an IoT device connected over 5G, it should get a better latency, for example. So the logic behind the lower the 5QI, the higher the priority in terms of QoS. So um, apologies if uh, this is a bit blurry. I have the PDF already online on the DBDK schedule, um, so that should be easier to read. But the idea is you get uh, a static function like DPI analyze M buffer that takes uh, whatever DPI instance could be open source, could be closed source, you get an, an M buffer in it, a pointer to an M buffer, a thread ID, and the output parameter is the 5QI. Well, we pretty much just unwrap the M buffers. Uh, we expect a certain length within that layer to frame we want to inspect. And uh, later on, we just do a quick uh, length check if there's enough meat on the bone. And we can pass this over to the DPI function. In this case, DPI process layer to frame. Ideally, within a few packets, you get an application ID back or a category like video, audio, file transfer, whatever it is. And now once we have a packet awareness within this flow, we can reverse look up a 5QI value, saying, as you see in the code comment later on, uh, we have a, a certain control flows like stun or DNS. Those get uh, the lowest 5QI, and the higher we go, uh, the less they get treated. All right, so I want to um, conclude this with some recommendations uh, regarding how to test uh, 5G user behavior with open source tools and also DBDK. So in our experience, uh, TRX is a really powerful traffic generator. Um, it comes by default, unfortunately, with quite dated traffic profiles, which lack a lot of application awareness. So there is no real up-to-date profile. However, the approach of defining your own YAML uh, uh, files in there makes it really easy. So in the top left screenshot, you're going to see how you would record some single flow PCAP files using TCP dump and an iPhone or Android. So let's do a traffic mix of Google Play, iTunes, uh, Cloud, BBC, and Instagram you um, improve the generator function up on top to limit the amount of clients so you get a high flow rate per user equipment. And on the bottom left, you pretty much see that a capable CPU core can almost push 40 Gbps of that traffic, which emulates on each user equipment almost like 18 Gbps of downlink. Yeah, on the right side is a simple layer to forward example extended with DPI in order to prove that at this line rate, you can inspect traffic and get the according quality treatment. All right, so to summarize, we have awareness of uh, DPI in terms of the user equipment, in terms of the radio access network, the UPF, and how to test everything together for user plane traffic. All right, thank you. First question. Okay, it sounds very interesting. My question is, what layer is it? Is it application that you're 
proposing, do you propose it as a DPDK lib? I'm missing maybe, what is, where well, is it going to be implemented? Right, um, well so far the classification functions are maximum on, on layer four, so like port-based matching, but uh, you run into the risk that uh, you need a better application awareness and most applications run on port 443 on TCP or UDP, so still it doesn't give you any application insight or category insight, right? So the, the proposal here is clearly to, to get some application awareness in the uh, uh, in terms of DBDK frameworks. So uh, maybe, I, maybe I mispronounced my questions or maybe I didn't understand. So what you're suggesting is to add this awareness li library into DPDK as a new library in DPDK? Or are you creating an application, a standalone DPDK application that other application may call it, so that's... Uh... It's actually more the latter. You have a lot of open source already out there and closed source, it's more about how to combine the technology stack of DPDK with additional over-the-top application libraries, application detection libraries. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. One quick question. Um, and I'm kind of, I'll admit, a vested interest. Would it be useful at all for you to have a more advanced packet scheduler than the what we have in the quas sched today, which is just a pure classification? Um, there's a lot of better AQMs out there. Um, we have the PI, but we don't have any of the CODAL or FQ CODAL or any of the other better ones the Linux kernel has. Would it be worth it to have any of those in DPD for you? Um, uh, definitely in my experience with dealing with the carriers and UPF vendors, definitely, so we okay. should. Because a okay. lot of those work by being able to be fair without having to have as much knowledge. Right, right. Thank you. <laughs>